Hi and welcome to this little clip. The reason for this is to demonstrate the difference in the operation of hairspring types, specifically a Breguet overcoil and a standard um, hairspring, which you see on this down here, which is uh, it terminates at the end of the coil rather than being an overcoil. Now, if we take a look at the Breguet overcoil, the reason that this is so important in terms of um, assisting accuracy is the, the, because the terminal curve bends up and comes within the overall coil, you can look and see that the hairspring is breathing consistently around its entire circumference. So if you take a look at the, um, the hairspring pulsing in and out, you can see that it's, it's equal all the way around. So no matter which orientation this is in, that hairspring is breathing equally and it, it helps to minimize any forces of gravity acting upon it. So if we move on to this movement, this is a clone of the ETA 6497-6498, which is also a pocket watch movement. This is a Chinese made ST36. A great movement to begin to learn watchmaking on because it has all the basic functions that you need to learn to work on. Um, but it's as simple as it gets in terms of movement operation and it's nice and big as well because these were originally pocket watch movements and you can see at the moment the balance is stationary because there's no power wound onto that and you can also observe the shape of the hairspring I'm going to give that some wind now and we'll add some power to it and get that balance spinning and now here we are with the balance uh, spinning with a full wind. And if you look at the hairspring of the balance, what you'll see is the where the hairspring terminates, which is the, the stud, which is where it's pinned here. And then this, this one here is your regulating uh, pins. Uh, so the hairspring terminates here, it feeds through the regulating pins, and then it goes round in a coil right round to the middle of the balance wheel. And if you look at how this is oscillating, you'll note that it's breathing in and out more in this half of the balance wheel. So it's there's a lot of in and out movement breathing of the main of the hairspring on this uh, this side that's visible here than there is on this side that's now visible. And this is simply because of the way that the spring is pinned. And as mentioned with the Breguet overcoil, this is, um, this is resolved by bending the coil up, lifting it up above and curling it around inside the circumference of the hairspring. So that means that the entire hairspring contracts and expands um, much more evenly and this is the the primary difference between the two and it's only a matter of more modern materials more modern hairspring materials more modern alloys for the balance and so on that have made it that these can now be as accurate as an old style bimetallic balance with a blued steel Breguet hairspring. And as a final little clip for this section, here you can see both of these working side by side. So here you've got the blued, ste uh, blued steel Breguet overcoil hairspring, and you can see looking over here, pointing for care very carefully because this is obviously not cased, but this is where the hairspring terminates on this watch. And you can see it's much further in, it's actually inside the coil of the spring. And the same with the regulating stud where the, uh, the regulating pins are. These stick out much, much more because the, the terminal curve where the, where the end of the uh, hairspring terminates continues around the outside on the, what is effectively a standard uh, style that you will see on pretty much every watch nowadays. So hopefully 
you found this interesting and informative. Um, but yes, this, uh, this back in the day was one of the many innovations to assist with the positional accuracy um, and consistency of an oscillator or balance. So there we go. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.